Welcome to the Week in Review of February 4th through the February 8th. I'm Teddy. And I'm Josephine. And we're coming to you from Memorial Stadium to talk about Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. We started the week with our initial impressions of the book, and then later in the week got into the nitty-gritty of the different genres Shelley could have been writing in. My initial in impression of the novel is it's funny how the actual story of Frankenstein differs from um, our cultural assumptions about the story. Because of pop culture, I thought that the story of Frankenstein was an evil doctor, you know, kind of on top of the mountain who yeah. who makes a, a monster and unleashes him on the villagers below. And it was really just surprising to see that Victor was actually just an academic guy, yeah. this kind of solitary creature, wanted to boost his own ego and learn some more about the mystery of life. Um, I kind of thought that the book was a little bit dense and even kind of hard to read at some points. But I think that um, it really worked well with Victor's character because he was also kind of hard to relate to, so self-absorbed despite all the misgivings and suffering of his family and friends. Um, and I guess we can go into that more later when we talk about genre. We also talked about how neither Victor nor the creature is the actual narrator. That was one of the questions we covered on the quiz. Um, we didn't talk too much about why Shelley framed the story used Walton, but did you have any ideas about that? Um, maybe it's just because uh, she didn't want the story to be about Victor writing his memoirs. He wanted She wanted to make it more personal, maybe get it through a couple of layers um, mm -hmm. as um, the story, see if the story would change throughout uh, Changing Hands. Yeah, I think it also creates another dimension of family relationship because Robert is writing his sister and I think it makes it more accessible to a reader. On Wednesday, we uh, outlined three possible genres for Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, which were science fiction, gothic, and romanticism. And here's a couple of refreshers on each genre. So, science fiction includes elements of the future. It's often dystopian. There's a big emphasis on technology and the role of technology. Um, sometimes there's the use of pseudoscience as opposed to actual science, um, and that can lead to exploration of space. That's one of you know, people's favorite topics. And just generally having science as a theme, that kind of goes without saying. The genre of the uh, gothic has to do with the unknown. Um, there's usually dark characters in dark settings. There's a big emphasis and importance on the atmosphere created. Um, you know, there's the theme of, theme of revenge and suspense. And uh, this genre was a reaction to the Age of Reason. Mm -hmm. And then Romanticism is more about the return to nature as opposed to, to reason. Um, and it really brings home the power of the imagination. It's very emotional. It's very passionate. There's often characters who are mad in the book. Um, it relates strongly to philosophy. There's a very big emphasis on the development of characters, kind of this idea of the Bildung's Romain. There's um, this larger-than-life kind of idea. And then there's also these importance of the aesthetic qualities, so that there's the very picturesque portrayal of nature, the pathetic fallacy, how the character relates to nature. And then, of course, going along with that is the idea of solitude and even some exaltation of the individual. So um, Friday, we all decided to argue for and against each, uh, each topic, each genre. And um, Teddy brought up a good point how this can create problems if we try to uh, categorize Frankenstein into one of these genres. So we were asked to um, we were asked to get two points for either for science fiction, not science fiction, and gothic and romanticism. And um, what I personally think Frankenstein is is a romantic novel. Um, you know, the power of imagination is big, and in the, it says that passion and madness are keys. Well, he was very passionate about achieving his goal of creating his monster, and then he became mad after he uh, had achieved his goal. Mm -hmm. I would definitely agree with that, and I definitely think that there's a lot of importance on nature. You know, you see them on the ship, and they're traveling through the land of the ice and snow. Um, you see them, Frankenstein, and this creature, and Frankenstein himself in Geneva. And there's all this emphasis on him in the forest and climbing the mountains. And the creature definitely relates with that, too. So I think it's easy to, to turn to the romanticism when you're categorizing. Um, but definitely some of our classmates on Friday mentioned the science fiction, and I really liked how 
they were talking about the science fiction as like the foundation as a way of starting the book but not necessarily the whole mode of the it's book. It's not the beef of the tale. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, gothic, I can see that a little bit. That one's hard for it me, was, I think. It was, a, it was some dark settings throughout things. So. Yeah, I mean, it's very dark. It's kind of a, it's definitely a sad story. I don't know about terror or horror. Yeah. But Victor feels that. Maybe a little bit of revenge um, oh, that, the, yeah. that the monster has yeah. towards uh, towards Frankenstein. Mm -hmm. um, no, just a question to you. Um, question that I had is, what was she uh, Mary Shelley aiming for when writing this novel? Um, was it a cautionary tale? Um, what what morals? Of, what what was the moral of the story? And um, I hope that in class uh, we get to go over. You know what the historical context of the time was to see to really see it what she was aiming for, mm -hmm. and um, how her audience at that time would view this uh, novel. Yeah, because it definitely is kind of an entertaining read, so to speak. But I think that it's very that there's a lot of sub meaning about uh, you know family relationships, p parent to child, about science, about nature, maybe even about politics and poverty. Like, you know, because that the whole thing with the family in the cottage was really important. So I'm not quite sure where all that comes from. Perhaps she was saying, you know, take care of your creation as, um, you know, as parents, as Frankenstein's little brother was killed by his creation. So his dad mm -hmm. was not taking care of his son as as Dr. Frankenstein was not taking care of his creation. Mm -hmm. And it's very meta, too, because, you know, any book is kind of like the creation of the author. And so you have to and think, you know, about that, keep the author's idea in mind. One of the things I was thinking about is, you know, who is the villain in the story? Is there even a villain? And my first instinct is to go with Victor, to say, you know, yeah, obviously he was kind of a, you know, annoying dude, really selfish. But I'm not even sure if the villain this time is a character or person. I think that this villain is this sort of obsessive energy and this blindness or, or a neglect of children or your creation. Yeah, yeah that's true. Because you see how the neglect of the creature really unleashes havoc on society. But then the ending is so troubling with how upset the creature really is about everything. And it just seems like there's no resolution and there's no peace. Almost an unconditional love kind of thing towards Victor, even though that he wanted revenge on him so, so badly yeah. during his life. Yeah. And it's strange that Victor, like, his emotional state at the end isn't very complex. He's really just upset, whereas the creature is so tormented and torn in different directions. And who really didn't even have nearly, um, I guess, maybe the brain capacity or emotional capacity that right. Victor could have. Right, But in a lot of ways, he's more developed. More innocent. And, yeah. You know, than yeah. Victor was. Review. I hope that everyone has a fun and safe weekend. And we look forward to talking more about the book with everyone on Monday. Happy Mardi Gras.